Welcome to SNC Electric Company. SNC was founded in 1911 in Chicago, and today we have operations all over the world. SNC is a global leader in advanced switching, protection, and control solutions for power systems. How SNC grew from a one person shop into a global enterprise is a story of innovation, manufacturing prowess, and ingenuity. It is a story of survival from paying back an initial $1,000 loan to making it through the Great Depression and World War II. Most of all, it's about opportunities. Opportunities captured from the first decades of a brand new industry to today's digital revolution. In the early 1900s, as consumers embraced electric lights and appliances, Utilities installed larger generators and stepped up distribution voltages to reduce power losses. But breakdowns in substations were common because existing switching and protection technologies for interrupting current were totally inadequate. Flashovers or short circuits in switches could produce intense fires capable of destroying a substation. After one particularly bad fire in 1909 at Commonwealth Edison's Fisk Generating Station in Chicago, two Edison engineers, Edmund O. Schweitzer and Nicholas J. Conrad, started investigating a better way to tame the high-voltage arc. On their own time, they came up with the liquid power fuse, a spring-loaded fuse inside a glass tube filled with a fire-suppressing liquid. When short-circuit current melted the fuse, the spring was released and stretched out the arc, which was quenched inside the tube. It was a breakthrough, and in 1911, the two men borrowed $1,000 and formed Schweitzer and Conrad Incorporated. Its mission was to help utilities protect their systems from short circuits. By 1915, Schweitzer and Conrad had invested $30,000 to build a factory on Ravenswood Avenue on Chicago's north side. By the mid-1920s, 110 employees worked in the noisy shop that smelled of solder. By the late 1930s, s and had patented another groundbreaking invention, the load interrupter switch. These switches would later appear in substations and on pole tops everywhere. But they had a more immediate use during World War II. With circuit breakers in short supply, SNC answered the call by mating the switches with fuses inside cabinets. It was the earliest version of SNC's metal enclosed switchgear. After the war, as suburban sprawl brought great opportunities for the company's growth, Conrad recruited his son, John, as its new leader. John would spend the next 50 years in an all consuming drive to create an ideal industrial company. He would build a world-class manufacturing campus, start a subsidiary in Canada and a joint venture in Mexico, and press his teams to invent all new product categories. He provided employees with above average pay and benefits, a comfortable factory, and a social environment that included sports leagues, family picnics, and holiday parties. In return, he asked for complete loyalty, attention to detail, and a very high standard of quality and cleanliness. His formula worked. Many employees stayed at SNC for their entire careers. After World War II, Schweitzer and Conrad Incorporated changed its name to SNC Electric Company, doubled capacity by moving to a new location on Ridge Boulevard and aggressively pursued sales as the economy roared back to life. John Conrad believed that staying ahead of the competition required a tight product niche and long-term investments made possible by the company's private ownership. John always took the long-term view, both in terms of the value of our products and the way he constantly reinvested in the business. John did not follow the teachings of Wall Street, which have become increasingly short-term. He had no interest in selling his company, despite regular inquiries, and especially disliked huge conglomerates. I'm not about to let s and become the trinket of some big empire, he proclaimed. But competition was stiff. s and would survive only by offering the kind of product that no one else made. So s and created a stream of devices solving new power delivery problems that kept customers coming back. 
In 1959, SNC introduced the circuit switcher, a transmission voltage device that could replace a circuit breaker in many applications at a significant cost savings. Circuit switchers became a whole family of products and remain a big seller today. A housing boom and associated rapid growth in suburban communities presented another challenge for electric utilities. Underground electric service was frequently preferred due to the aesthetic and safety advantages it provides compared to overhead lines, as well as improved reliability. But utilities lacked reliable, cost-effective solutions for switching and protecting these lines. SNC developed a new approach with pad-mounted gear introduced in 1960. Pad-mounted gear provided switching and protection in an air-insulated enclosure located above ground, which was far more economical and reliable. SNC's pad-mounted gear has become the industry standard, and SNC has the largest installed base of pad-mounted gear in the world. Great products alone were not the key to success, however. SNC's sales force comprised exclusively of experienced engineers who knew how power systems worked distinguished SNC from the competition. By spending time at substations and in bucket trucks, helping customers meet real-world challenges, they reinforced SNC's reputation as a true business partner. When a hurricane or ice storm took down power lines, SNC would go into overdrive, working nights and weekends to make and ship replacement products. Customers appreciated these efforts and often said so. We pursue a rock-solid course of integrity in everything we do. We do what we say, and if we ever let a customer down, we do everything we can to make it right and make them happy. As sales began to grow outside the U.S., SNC looked for ways to build stronger relationships with these customers and provide even better support. Toward that end, SNC founded SNC Electric Canada in 1953. Since that time, SNC has established operations in countries around the world. SNC has also built a global sales team with a network of offices worldwide. One of John Conrad's most strategic investments came in 1959 with construction of the Nicholas J. Conrad Laboratory Building. With its powerful generator and testing equipment, the $2 million lab expanded SNC's knowledge of high-voltage plasma fields, inrush currents, and transient recovery voltages. This widened the gap between SNC and its competitors. Recognizing that he would soon turn 65, Conrad knew fresh talent was needed. So he ramped up his recruitment efforts at university engineering departments and began cultivating new leaders. One of those young leaders was John Esty. Esty moved through various departments, earned an MBA at the University of Chicago, and by 1977 was a vice president. Working for John Conrad was invigorating and very demanding. He worked 24-7 before there was such a term, and he expected nothing less from his direct reports. In 1988, Esty became president, and in 1997, president and CEO. He would later serve as executive chairman. In the mid-1990s, the electric power industry changed dramatically as the so-called deregulation of the electric utilities swept across our major market, the United States. With Conrad's backing, Esty began a complete revamping of manufacturing. He restructured the company to spread decision-making more widely and to improve communication with customers. Esty also ramped up training and safety programs, asking all employees to bring their best ideas to work. Changing times helped establish team-driven manufacturing cells and inventory reduction. Virtually every manufacturing area was reorganized to create smaller batches of parts when needed, a process that has continued to evolve and is now termed the Lean Performance System. LPS reminds us we must squeeze out the waste our customers shouldn't have to pay for and must speed up our operations to increase our responsiveness. Unique and innovative high-tech devices continued to be developed on Ridge Boulevard throughout the 90s. Innovations that provided a foundation for new SNC solutions that would address power delivery challenges in the next century. For the utilities, because people are so much more dependent on electricity now, for their very connectedness to, to the world, the standard of reliability has gone up. 
And for the utilities, that means they have to rise to meet that standard. As use of electronics grew, so did demand for increasingly reliable electric power. A power outage not only means hours of inconvenience, it could also cost millions of dollars in lost productivity, lost sales, and even damage to goods and property. In recent decades, communities worldwide have also pushed to increase the use of clean, sustainable energy sources and greater energy efficiency. And more businesses and consumers are taking charge of their own power use by installing rooftop solar panels to generate their own electricity. The power delivery system built during most of the 20th century was not designed to handle these new demands. If you showed Alexander Graham Bell our smartphones, he'd be amazed. But if you showed Thomas Edison or George Westinghouse our energy grid, they would recognize it as very familiar and fundamentally similar to the way things were done in their day. It was time to re-engineer the grid using new technology. A so-called smart grid does just that. With the traditional grid, more often than not, a utility figured out there was a problem when a customer called in because they didn't have power. Then it would take time to mobilize a force to figure out where the problem was, to get people out there to fix it, and to get power back on. That process could take hours. Today with the smart grid, much of that is electronic, deploying electrical devices out on the grid that are networked together and they can figure out where a problem is, and they can figure out how to route around it in a matter of seconds rather than hours. SNC's Intelleruptor, the smartest of SNC's smart switches, offered a further advancement in the form of pulse closing, the first major advancement in the power handling aspects of fault isolation since reclosing was introduced in the 1940s. Instead of simply reclosing to determine if a fault is still present, potentially slamming full short circuit current back into the system, Intelleruptor uses the system's energy to send a tiny blip of power down the line, reads the wave, then decides whether to close in or remain open. Until recently, electricity always had to be generated at the exact time it was used, making it more difficult to use wind and solar energy because the wind isn't always blowing and the sun isn't always shining when people want to use electricity. New battery technology is making it possible to buffer the effects of intermittent renewable resources. Our electronics and energy storage are enabling a major shift in how power is generated by allowing larger quantities of renewable generation on the grid which is helping reduce carbon emissions. It can also serve other functions, like providing a local backup power supply if there's an outage on the utility power system, and providing an additional supply of electricity when demand is high. SNC offers advanced power electronics products that manage charging and discharging of these batteries with sophisticated software that identifies exactly when the batteries need to discharge their stored energy. Amid these changes in the industry, SNC's Power System Solutions operation has emerged as a partner to many SNC customers who are looking to adopt new smart grid technology and integrate new renewable energy resources. Today, we have a broad array of offerings, which includes 24 by 7 monitoring services, it includes power system studies, and if you want to build a complete solar farm or substation, we can design it and build it for you. SNC has continued to make investments in facilities to support ongoing product innovation. The Advanced Technology Center, opened in 2010, is a state-of-the-art high-power testing facility that is enabling SNC to accelerate development and delivery of innovative switching and protection products. John Conrad would have enjoyed all of this especially that his company is competing aggressively in an era as exciting as when his father began taming the high-voltage arc. On August 30th, 2005, at the age of 89, John Conrad died at home. He had labored for decades to ensure that his company would not be sold off after his death. I think John Conrad would be amazed, delighted, and proud to see the kinds of solutions we offer today. Our use of electronics, power electronics, and software to achieve gentle pulse closing instead of brute force reclosing. Our ability to restore power in seconds without any human intervention. Or 
are supplying energy storage units large enough to run small towns for several hours. John would have been very pleased that on October 1st, 2007, SNC became an employee-owned company. Because we are 100% employee-owned, 100% of any profit we make gets reinvested in the business. No one knows what the future will bring, but as SNC Electric Company moves into its second century, it remains what it has always been, an innovation leader, a company with integrity, and a place where employees apply talent, ingenuity, and hard work to serve customer needs. There's nobody working here today who was here 100 years ago when we started. But our culture is as strong as ever, and it's built on those same guiding principles and values that we started the company with. Our belief in rock-solid integrity, our dedication to private ownership and to reinvesting all of our profits back into the business, and our commitment to our communities in giving back. Here at SNC, the culture that we have built and our commitment to innovation will continue to keep us successful.